This is Let's Talk, getting to the root causes of the important issues of the day. This on-air community forum believes your voice matters and welcomes all thoughts and views without judgment. Please join today's conversation by calling 415-663-8492 or tweet us at Let's uh, Talk. And Kevin, don't tweet us. Nah. But just, you know, call, call, or come to the studio. You can just, just pop in. in. Yes, call in 6638492. My name is Charles Schultz. I'm here, as always, with Stephen Hurwitz and Paul Raphael, and the lovely Shelley Rugg cannot be with us today. Mm. I think yeah. I miss you, Shelley. No tweets. You don't want uh, the president to tweet us. Maybe that's the big fear. Oh. Ah. Well, oh, no. it, it, but this is also a topic, uh, I think, particularly uh, uh, close to the heart of every 11 year old boy. So maybe Shelley didn't want to be there for, for that. What is the topic today? <laughs> Hypersonic weapons. Hypersonic ah. weapons. Faster Hyper- than the speed of sound. Something that... Five times w- faster than the speed of yes. sound. Mach 5 and more. Fast, silent, can reach uh, any place on the planet in an hour or so. They, Undetectable. They don't go up out of the atmosphere and then back down. There's not that same trajectory thing. They can be guided in the atmosphere but flying at Mach 5, Mach 6. What are we talking about? Are these drones? Is this something new? I don't uh, know. Uh, well, they're unmanned for sure, yes. <coughs> but they're missiles, but they're... That's what the... Oh, uh, it's perfect for radio. A yes, whole, uh, new, uh, whole new type of cruise missile, essentially. Uh-huh. You know, for me, the... Uh, uh, the the subject really the question is that uh, it seems like we're going into a completely new uh, arms race with these things. The Chinese are developing them. The Russians we're developing, and then some smaller countries are going to follow suit. Of course, uh, you know. Well, well, and it changes it changes everything because right now you can't. Uh, there's not enough time to detect them and to decide what to do about it, and whether what's coming at you is nuclear. And uh, so what what that does to the decision-making by our president, or, you know, I don't know when these, uh, when are they going to come into effect? I don't know. We're still going for it. They're saying 2020s or 2025, uh, Russia and China and U.S. will have these. I just, is it really anything, I mean, new? Can't, can't people bomb each other all they like today? Uh, or not? Well, uh, yeah, there, sure is the, there is the deterrent we, factor that, uh, you know, we have um, missile detection and intervention technology and strike back technology. But if you're able to, uh, if you're able to, uh, hmm. we've just gotten a drone message here. Hello. Uh, <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Thank oh. you. Uh, <laughs> Again, so that was perfect for radio. I am here. Yes. The, the, the question, uh, my private, mic was low. Private message. Was, uh, yeah. Yeah. But, um, but, okay, but I'm just saying, you know, aerial bombing was considered once humane, right? Back in the teens and the 20s, that was considered a more humane way to conduct war. Uh, the, as I've said in the show before, you know, the first uh, aerial bombing of Iraq by the British was, I think, 1922. So coming up on a great anniversary here in a few years. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. And, How, I'm, I'm not following that. How is that uh, considered to be more humane? Well, you, given given right, I mean, it's a question of relatively speaking, right? Today, we 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 have come on the other side of having, um, you know, I dropped more bombs on Vietnam than were dropped in the whole of World War Two. You know, we're we're definitely on the other side of it now. But it was considered more humane than sending an army into a village and raping and pillaging and all that stuff. You just drop a few bombs, surgical and strikes. They, when they get remember them, that, yeah, and they get the message. It was smart bombs. You remember we you, the, they had little cameras on them during the first Iraq War and on the evening news every night. You would see footage of uh, of a, a wedding being yeah, hit by right. a smart bomb. of uh, an Iraqi wedding taking out a, a missile. I love um, the neutron bomb, by the way. That's my favorite. Uh, that, uh, was a guy, uh, Herb Cohen, who's I think dead now, but he was uh, a Californian and uh, well, or, or ended his life in California. That was his, you know, little project. Interesting guy. Um, but this is a, a bomb that would kill the people, but save the real estate. Is Keep that the infrastructure that's intact? <laughs> that's right. <laughs> We've actually had one of those over West Marin. It's the buildings are still there, but you know, there's nobody in them. Um, Only here in the bunker. That's, they tested the <laughs> neutron bomb on West Marin. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was considered more humane, and now I think, to me. Uh, is that nobody experiences this? Some people, uh, some some teenagers in the Air Force in a room in Arizona, uh, you know, are, are playing a video game in which they press a button and you know a village blows up or a wedding blows up or whatever. I remember whatever. that film actually. Which one was this? I don't remember the name of it, but I remember that they had Harold kids Maude. playing 
kids playing video games, and it turned out they were all connected oh, to uh, toys. Yeah. War games. No, toys. Well, to I'm thinking of toys, the one War with Robin games. Williams. Matthew Broderick. Oh, what? War games. Well, there was that one, and, and toys a few years later with the wonderful Michael Gambon. Uh, the, uh, the there was a, the same same premise, and and then it became reality, right? I mean, it was when you watch the we say war games thirty years ago, or or toys about twenty five years ago. Now, who would have thought that this is actually something yeah, that's going to be real? The I pilots, didn't. they're not pilots, of course, who are doing the drone strikes. Uh, come home every night for dinner, and then come out of the bunker in Utah, wherever they are, go home for dinner. How was your day, honey? Oh, great. Well, well, it's I scary that you – I mean, the idea is that empathy happens in contact with another person. If you don't have to look at someone, it's that it's a, a bit from the third man when uh, uh, sure. Joseph Cotton and um, – uh, <laughs> who's the much more <laughs> – less famous actor than Joseph Cotton, name I can think of. Uh, Orson Welles, they're up in the uh, <laughs> the Ferris wheel, and they're looking down, and he's saying, if I gave you 20,000 pounds for one of those little dots that stop moving, would you really tell me to keep my money, old man? Mm -hmm. uh, and mm -hmm. so if you don't see people – like, we don't, right? I mean, we have this country that goes around the world blowing people up, but we never – have any kind of meaningful physical contact with that. So mm. it's very difficult to have kind of empathy or even care. Well, recently, uh, Raqqa, we uh, destroyed the city in order to save it. Uh, I've seen photographs. It's really uh, literally a... Uh, Rubble or or yeah. Mosul or you know and all covered in our uh, depleted uranium dust that's giving everyone leukemia. Explain that because I I had never heard of that until you you told me about it. This is the they use uh, uranium leftover uranium the the byproduct of uranium uh, um, of uh, nuclear power stations. Wonderful, <laughs> hooray! Uh, hey, we got all this stuff, all this spent uranium spent. Not meaning it's not radioactive. It's just not useful for a power station anymore. So they, the military is all the Brits do it in the UK. They cover everyone, the uh, well, it, they cover the uh, projectiles because it's, it's heavier than steel. It's heavier than steel, so it can it bunker busting or just shooting. You know, you can shoot a bullet through a car engine or a truck engine and disable well, it you, and and go through armor. And so every time somebody fires a gun. In, and fires a uh, a shell in uh, in an American war zone. We're spreading this uranium dust around, and uh, yeah, leukemia um, birth rates are going off. You know, uh, stillbirths, leukemia. Kids are getting leukemia. Kids are being affected by our our radiation. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, but. Um, and speaking of uh, of war games and uh, and uh, video games, computer games, that's been f since the two thousands, uh, early two thousands. The military has been using those computer games for training, for attracting first recruits, and then training them because and acclimating you know, uh, youngsters into the idea that this is what happens. Yeah, yeah. Um, we have a caller. Hi, caller. You're on the air. What's your name, please? Hi, this is Martine in Bolinas. Hey, Martine. And uh, just to follow up on the depleted uranium, yeah. I just I felt a little twinge of pain when it was somewhat minimized or even spoken of jokingly. Hmm. There are many deformed children being born yep. in Iraq. The last that I heard, I didn't. I don't have a count on it, but horribly deformed. Uh, of course, many miscarriages as a result of this uh, radiation in the soil. And it's certainly no joking matter, and it is a, a war crime. It's, uh, it's, it's, you know, we need to stop it. And, and, and it's coming to us, too, because guess what? The dust goes up into the atmosphere and lands all over the planet. Yep. So it's yeah. not just... It's everywhere. Nothing is over there anymore. There's no <laughs> over right. there. There is no over there. We are over there. I think that's an important point, Martine, is but, but the, uh, that's a conceptual jump. Uh, I, I would agree with you. Nothing is over there. Um, but that's, uh, you know, some, some place you have to, to get to in your, your mind because our day-to-day -day physical uh, encounter with reality doesn't include any of these horrors for most people. Um, and, uh, and so it's hard to maintain a focus on the idea that, you know, this is uh, our nation, uh, in theory, uh, one that has some kind of democratic uh, uh, control um, over its government, uh, doing this to another nation, but very hard to see, right? And very hard to, to, to hold that thought in your mind that this is something that we ha share share responsibility for doing um yeah so. we do it's, uh, it's it's part of the terrorist 
MO, in, mm-hmm. including all the, the bombing and fire bombing from World War One, where we discovered we could have this horrible effect from the air of creating firestorms. That was a terrorist, horrible terrorist war crime. So the beat goes on. And thank you for the show. I'll ring off. Well, thank you, Martin. Thanks for calling it. Well, I remember Agent Orange, right, and all the birth uh, uh, defects yep. and, and health problems that was that were caused by the use of. Um, the uh, defoliant uh, Agent Orange uh, in, uh, in in Vietnam. Uh, I you know remember encountering people who had been in Vietnam who had had serious serious health problems because of exposure. Uh, you know, and that was forty years ago, more than forty years. And ago. then the wonderful invention of napalm. What a wonderful thing! That Interesting was. fact: yeah. we dropped more napalm or used more napalm in uh, Korea than we did in Vietnam. That, that is that interesting. Yeah. Wow. You know, one of the things that I've been thinking about, and might be uh, maybe I'm behind the curve on this. But uh, the Big Bangs uh, with uh, with MAD have been essentially uh, unusable. Uh, Explain MAD. Yeah. Mutually uh, assured destruction. Mm. So you try and destroy us, we'll, we can do the same thing to you. So we can't use those weapons because it will uh, – it assures that uh, we'll be destroyed as well. Uh, and uh, – but today, it's uh, it's not the big bang that's so dangerous. It's the little bang. Uh, we've got these small nuclear weapons, and with mm. with these with these hypersonic missiles, you can uh, you can you can contain your uh, your bang. You can you you maybe you can uh, have a small uh, explosion uh, in Korea where uh, you're just targeting uh, missile sites or. Uh, nuclear weapon sites, and uh, mm. it just seems to be more likely to be used on that level. Well, that was the dream, and, and Obama, at the end of his second term, uh, proved a trillion dollars, look it up if you don't believe me, a trillion dollars over 30 years to modernize our nuclear weapons. And uh, thank, thanks, Obama. Um, yeah. you know, so it's, and that was a long dream of the military-industrial complex, this... this uh, uh, these uh, uh, small-scale or low-yield nuclear weapons to be used tactically in the battlefield or for this exactly. reason, that reason, the other reason. Exactly. It's, it's pretty hideous stuff. Uh, but, you know, I mean, I think in some sense mutually assured destruction is still uh, with us. I don't think the United States and uh, Russia or China will um, want to uh, get into war uh, with each other. So it, the battlefield shifts, right? It shifts to cyber warfare, mm-hmm. and it shifts to who can you kill without, you know, outraging... Uh, one public opinion in your own country and uh, a, a serious enemy that can fight back. So invariably, this is uh, what's called the global south. This is brown people in the Middle East, Central Asia, Africa, yeah. you know, etc. Explain to me the rationale <clears throat> um, that uh, we need 6,000 of these. One, one, two of them will destroy right. the planet. Why do we need 6,000? I'll, I'll give you an example. My brother worked in Washington, D.C., and uh, he met a Lockheed Martin uh, lobbyist who said, we've got a body on a man. That's 535 lobbyists, one each for every member of Congress, and that's just one of the corporations that make up what we call the military-industrial complex. It's mm-hmm. big business. It's mm-hmm. how people make money. I mean, I never saw the movie, but it was described to me. Uh, who? Uh, in this, that's what a ridiculous way of prefacing it. I was told about a scene in, in Michael Moore's movie about the mass shooting in Colorado, uh, Bowling for Columbine, in which everybody in Co- Colorado Springs works for defense contractors. They're making yeah. missiles, and they're saying, what is this violence? I don't understand. They use these weapons to it. And, you know, it's like somebody talking with the giant missile they work on behind them or right. something. I, I, I didn't see the scene, but so we we that's you know war is business and, uh, and jobs program best business of all and the military wow no, there's all f- the toys that they need the fabulous painting uh, by the wonderful uh, Donna Sheehan that used to be on your wall uh, two <laughs> two men in, in uh, white summer jackets uh, uh, you know tuxedoed. Uh, saying, what it was, isn't war swell? I, I <laughs> war is swell. War yeah. is swell. War is swell. Um, mm-hmm. Give us a call, won't you? 415-663-8492. Let us know your opinions on on the the coming century of warfare and the wonderful things that the military is dreaming up for everyone, um, including their training and their uh, these new the hypersonics are going to change a lot. Um, and other things, uh, robot wars. I mean, we're all, you know, it's all Arnold Schwarzenegger as the robot and all that sort of stuff. But uh, is that going to happen? What do you think? I mean, is it going to be AI is going to be running wars, of course, because it's like a chess game and AI is already proved what 
20 years ago, it proved that it could figure out chess, which is... Well, here's an interesting thing about AI, and you can, you can watch this uh, as a part of uh, Adam Curtis's wonderful series of documentaries called uh, The Living Dead. Uh, <laughs> interesting. Mm-hmm. I think it's in the first uh, episode, um, or a little documentary made. It was about the fellow Minsky who's credited with the development of artificial intelligence. And what, what uh, uh, Curtis points out is that this wa- his work was funded by the military, what was called ARPA, which is now called DARPA, DARPA. the, the yeah. Defense Advanced Research. Research projects, you know, whatever administration or authority or the, whatever it is, uh, the way that the, the government funds military research. And so, you know, Minsky's uh, public presentation is one of, oh, AI is going to do all these wonderful things for us. But what he was doing was building the brain of the cruise missile yeah. all the way back then so that the, exactly. the missile would be able to recognize a target and, 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 and attack it. That brings up a whole new subject, which is the, uh, the uh, combination of uh, high tech. Uh, it's, they're not just building video games anymore. Mm-hmm. They're building training games for military. Yeah. And the uh, guidance systems. Yeah. Well, it, and uh, I met somebody hmm, a few years ago now who works at a company in Santa Rosa that makes optics hmm. for cruise missiles. Ah. And he said, well, I'm just making the lenses. Huh? <laughs> I'm not, you know, I'm not part of the, okay. <laughs> so that's how they do it. They, it's like the, it's like, you know, all the parts are assembled elsewhere and everyone's just, I'm a, I'm a glass grinder. I'm a, I'm a techie guy who builds the circuit boards. Nothing to do with me what it's used for. And of course it all comes together at Raytheon or, uh, Lockheed, or Lockheed Martin, all those lovely guys, and uh, off they go. There's a good reason for that, by the way. Spreading why, why U.S. A, technology everywhere. Why it's spread around? It's like uh, every congressman oh, wants sure. to bring oh, home yeah, the bacon. Sure. So they, they, they said about the B-1 bomber that one part of it was like in every congressional district in the exactly. country or something. <laughs> no, I think I think that's right, and and you don't get a lot of uh, political pushback against uh, war. You know, Bernie Sanders had a lot to say about domestic policy in the United States, very little to say about foreign policy, not something he wanted to touch, which leaves people who are opposed to war in the kind of unfortunate position of having, what, Rand Paul be the one person that's going to say that we need to close these military bases or stop, you know, all of this military aggression around the world. Um, so, you know, what happened to the anti-war movement? Um, mm-hmm. We all marched. And, what and did now, happen to it? Well, you, uh, you know, the, one theory about it is uh, that uh, in an age of individualism, people see them, uh, uh, see these things as uh, individual personal uh, self-expressions. So I, in the march in London, three million people marching against the Iraq war, the, the slogan was, not in my name. Right. Not, and, and so, it, it, and I feel that way too. And I would say if you ask, if we go out in the street and ask people if they're for or against war, they would say, no, I'm very much against it. But as an individual choice or an individual expression, they're I think against a vol- they, voluntary sorry. military has, has a lot to do with that. Nobody's grabbing you. It's not personal. The people that are fighting, uh, they, they're doing it by choice. Uh, well, kind it's of no because, draft anymore. Well, but it's mercenary, right? I mean, poor people uh, who have no uh, sort of ability to or, or path to some kind of reasonable uh, way of, of living and surviving, and along comes this uh, entity that says, "We're going to pay you. We're going to pay for your housing. We're going to pay your taxes. You stay in long enough, you're going to get a pension. You're going to get health care. You get dignity, right? I mean, you come from a, a, a world in which uh, people are kind of utterly sort of degraded and robbed of their dignity by poverty, often." multi-generational poverty, and all of a sudden you've got a uniform. And you're, you're a part of this, you know, uh, doing your duty. And, you're and a all hero. Stuff. A, a hero and a responsible person. And, uh, and all this. if you're what they call a dreamer, you'll be uh, deported now. So there you go. 663-8492 <laughs> oh, um, uh, to join this conversation about the warfare of the present, warfare of tomorrow. What do we... Well, yeah, I mean, it's it's coming. Uh, they're working. Your tax dollars are hard at work creating new weapons that will uh, outstrip everybody else's defenses. Um, And there's a... uh, Just reading a quote. There there is no technology that does not get used by the military at some point, right? I mean, they're... Lysergic acid back in <laughs> L- LSD. LSD back in the old days, they took that and, and tried using. Oh, what if we uh, what if we sprayed this on the battlefield? What would that do? You know, I mean, it, nothing is. Uh, there's nothing that's too immoral or too uh, weird for them not to try it out at least well, and test it. It's like having 
having the Muskegee airmen standing around watching a nuclear blast, isn't that what? A uh, Tuskegee mean? experiment, experiment was about uh, exposing people to syphilis or syphilis, people sorry, who were exposed yes. to syphilis, not right. treating them right. so that it could be studied, which is a pretty right. particularly hideous moment in American history, but not the fault of the uh, military. And but I met a guy when, in my sailing days who was on one of the submarines out in the Pacific around... Uh, the atolls they were blowing up. Bikini. Um, and Bikini and Mad- Majorone? No, they were launching from Majorone. And uh, any anyway, Wetok, that's it. Uh, he was in one of the subs that was, you know, they had them all at different depths and they had surface ships and uh, he was on one of those things. He said that just the whole, this huge nuclear sub just suddenly lifted like this. Good Lord. Just boom. And, Impressive. Uh, uh, he got out of the military after that <laughs> on a on a uh, yes very wise on a pension. <laughs> um, we have a caller. Hi, caller. What's your name, please? And please, what's your language? What language do I speak in? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear that. <laughs> I am just trying to. I was trying to make a joke. This is Shelley calling. Oh, she, oh, Shelley. Shelley. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> wow. Well, uh, you know, it's so funny. Uh, I'm way more nervous calling in than sitting in the seat. How interesting. <laughs> it's, it's really bizarre. My heart's beating. Oh. Anyway, uh, just calling to chime in on the whole war discussion because, you know, I can't ever remember a time in my life that I thought war was a good thing. Mm. And the idea that it's just going to, you know, perpetuate forever and now it's going to be turned over to robots and kids who are good at video games it's it's a pretty sad state of affairs i'd say and uh i've always thought about war kind of like like a being immature um you know if you think about most people try to raise their kids to um work their their problems out with each other in a nonviolent way. Mm. Uh, if we punch somebody as an adult, we could end up in jail for assault. Uh, certainly if we kill somebody, we, you know, get, lose our own lives. But somehow our culture has embraced the idea of war as just a given. Um, and it's it's horrible. Mm. And how and and I guess you know when you think about ending war, how can we even believe that to be possible? Because of you know there's so much fear that's been instilled in us. Uh, if if we suddenly don't have guns, we don't have our own weapon. Um, our own government will do us in. Well, Shelley, um, I, I, I uh, want to just go back to one thing you said, which is as a given. And I think that's right. I think people, we don't discuss war. And we don't discuss what the United States military does because it's considered to be a part of nature. It's like saying that the tree shouldn't grow like that. Everybody would look at you and think, well, you know, maybe you're right, Charles, but that's just what trees do. And so <laughs> this idea that it's, it's a given, that it's just part of uh, the way that we survive and who we are. Are. And so the polite thing to do is don't bring it up. Nobody likes it. Why do you want to talk about it? You're going to ruin mm. ruin our afternoon with this. Uh, um, so it, it's creepy. It's really creepy. It's like a you know whatever. It's like a, a dystopian sci-fi story yeah, about you know. But what if you happened. want people to bring it up, reinstitute the draft. Well, there was always a, well they won't do <clears> that <throat> precisely for that reason. Well, Charlie Rangel, I love Charlie Rangel. I hope he's still in Congress. Um, he continually during the Iraq War and the Bush years would would bring up a, a new draft bill to try and uh, for, for the explicit reason of if uh, rich white people's kids are going to this war, then you know it, it might not uh, uh, happen or it might not last as long, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, I mean, that's, I don't know, uh, that would be, be nice if, if uh, that happened, I guess. I mean, uh, uh, but also, you know, people, um, we, well, we lose our idealism. I mean, I think we live uh, with, you know, an obsession with physical comfort and physical security, et cetera, et cetera, and an understanding that, you know, um, uh, if you want to resist the things that the state does, you're going to lose your comfort. You might go to jail. You might, you know, whatever. These, these bad things are going to happen to you. So don't do it. Don't resist.
coast. It's well, not fun. And there's a long tradition, speaking to what Shelley was saying, that, uh, you know, it's just a given that uh, um, it's been reinforced by every in every decade since World War Two, at least, in uh, Hollywood, in films. I mean, uh, Saving Private Ryan, you know, or Dunkirk. Z- <clears throat> or zero, these... zero Dark Thirty, right, about an empowered woman who tortures to save the world. Right. You know? I mean, <laughs> and you're just like, whoa. So, I mean, they're willing to take it out of the, 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 the sort of uh, uh, martial fantasies. So, martial, so to speak, uh, of, of little boys and take it into, well, maybe this is about empowerment. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, superpowerment. Oh, um, yeah. Anyway. But, yeah, and then, you know, the whole notion that's just driven, you know, home to us constantly that, that this war is, is to protect our freedom. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's not. <laughs> and families are proud that their children are, are right. they're, they're saving course. the world for democracy in some sense. Yes, of course. And there's only so much freedom to go around, so... You know, well, we can't have other people being free. Well, and look how somebody like... I'm sorry, Shelley, go on. I was just saying young, healthy men, for the most part, young young men who, you know, really want to do good in the world. They think that's what they're doing, and they enlist, mm-hmm. and then they, they learn some really horrible truths. Yep. And, uh yeah. I think that's, I think that's, I'm glad, you know, um, well, not glad, but when people do learn those truths and come back and tell their story and try and work to, to uh, change um, uh, the, the, the world that they're in I, I, is, is very helpful. I mean, the problem, and I guess it's that draft problem again, is the privileged people, the people at the top of the society that own everything, um, <clears throat> uh, never have those experiences. And in fact, they construct their lives in such a way that they never encounter the suffering of other people. Mm-hmm. If they do, it's mm-hmm. a, some kind of sentimental interaction. I go to a soup kitchen once a year. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and so, you know, that, that people become aware of the suffering of these, uh, the people that are are uh, uh, having their cities and towns bombed uh, and then come back and tell that story to um, people like us, I think that's great. Mm-hmm. I, but, I mean, you see how they're reviled in the media, like Cindy Sheehan and, and, the, and the, you know, right. the, the mother of a soldier that was killed, uh, you know, who for a moment during the Bush years when, like, liberal media kind of wanted, didn't like Bush, she had some prominence and then, like, disappeared. You know, Gone. nobody yeah. wanted to, to I talk I think about she it. burned out. Yeah, I mean, it was attacked kind of viciously, yeah. but, you know, by the media. How how dare she, you know, be against war? Well, there's a lot of money, uh, you know, there's oh. a lot of money to be lost. Huge amounts of money. It's yeah. uh, just, I, I think, it, what did I write in the blurb? I think it was uh, eight million, eight, ten million, you know, ten million, no, billion. Just for gaming, <laughs> this something is the defense budget uh, dedicated defense budget, to games, yeah, billions of dollars. <clears throat> anyway, I have to do. Uh, this is KWMR ninety point five in Point Reyes Station, eighty nine point nine Molinas, ninety two point three San Geronimo Valley, and streaming live kwmr dot org. We have uh, National Weather Service has issued a beach hazard statement for large shore break, dangerous rip currents, and sneaker waves. Northwest swells eight to ten feet are expected. West and northwest facing beaches will be particularly affected. A beach has its statement for large surf and sneaker waves means conditions are present to support a heightened risk of unsuspecting beachgoers being swept into the sea by a wave. People walking along the beach should never turn their back to the sea. Fishermen should avoid fishing from rocks or jetties. Yes, look out on the beach. Susan Hayes is a supporter of KWMR, but uh, below that is sustainable sports. There is also a... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I got my stickers confused. The Sustainable Sports Foundation, which puts on the Marin County Half Marathon, the Marin County Triathlon Weekend, and the Celebrity Doodle Auction, all net proceeds from these events, provide swim lessons for children from low-income families with an emphasis on water safety. More information online at sustainablesports.org. Programming on KWMR is underwritten by Toby's Feed Barn on Main Street in Point Reyes Station, offering hay and feed, garden supplies, fit, gifts, fresh bread and produce, and fine art in Toby's Gallery. Toby's is home to the Community Garden, Toby's Coffee Bar, Yogato Studio, and the Saturday Farmer's Market during the summer. 
And we're supported by Zenith Instant Printing in Novato, serving the community since 1975. Zenith Instant Printing helps with printing and mailing projects from concept to completion or anywhere in between. 415-897-0454. That's 415-897-0454. Or online at zenithinstantprinting.com. There. Business is done. Uh, Shelley, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> You're still there. I'm Hang it in. still here. I'm, I'm burying my potatoes in, in another layer of dirt right now. Yeah, a little winter gardening. By the way, uh, 663-8317, if the line is busy because of the lovely Shelley rug, yeah. you can call us at 663-8317. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, I mean, this, you know, well, I, the, the world that we live in is very much one that was caused uh, by the so-called golden age of American science, this period, say, from 1945 to 1975 or 80, which gave us the cell phone and the satellite and the, you know, all of these mm-hmm. things that, are, that, that we think of as just the way our, our world is put together and um, you know these are uh, um, these are things that were uh, research that was funded by the Defense Department uh, you know I'd like to ask the question is uh, how do we get out of the arms race how do people withdraw from it you've got a major power Uh, the other guys are doing it we feel we have to do it or we're the person that starts and they feel like they have to do it Mm -hmm. Uh, well what is define major power what does that actually mean it means military Basically, yes, right? but in general, we're talking about China, Russia, and the United States. Well, I think the, the, the question is, is uh, to, well, on one level, is to to remove the argument in favor of it. So, for instance, Jerry Brown is for fracking in the state of California. Why? Because he has a wonderful pet phrase that he always employs uh, when people say fracking is bad. He says, "Get real. You know, we need to, we need gas and oil. To, if we don't get it, you know, here we're going to have to get it from the Middle East." So, there, you know, this is an argument that says that if you change the uh, energy economy, then and where is the argument to prop up uh, hideous regimes like in Saudi Arabia and, you know, bomb countries into oblivion like Iraq? Um, that argument uh, recedes. But if they're developing hypersonic, then we have to develop hypersonic. I mm-hmm. guess, but, I mean, do you... Mm-hmm. Uh, or do we? I, I, well, exactly, do we? I, I mean, here's the thing. Uh, after 9-11, where are the, where are the terrorist attacks? Where is this, this, uh, this new reality in which it's not safe to go outside? Uh, that was one event... You know, 17 years ago. Mm. Um, and so this idea that, like, America is going to be somehow terrifyingly unsafe if we don't we develop the new weapon or this, uh, the other thing, I, I don't know that that's credible. Well, then the case could be made that because we're over there dropping bombs on people, we're, uh, we're keeping them out. Yeah, oh, oh that's that right. the argument yes. that they make? Yes. Yeah. The, is there we're a... a uh, as long as we're a bully in the world... People will leave us alone. The thing about being a bully is you have to keep being a bully. <laughs> I mean, th- th- that's you know, you can't just so I'll be nice now. You can't sleep. You know, we take we keep a count as to uh, how many how many people die in the United States uh, resulting from terrorist attacks, etc. But we're not keeping a count as to how many we've killed over there. On, on <laughs> no, no, right. Good point. Are we? Yeah, no. Just, uh, uh, not, nobody, nobody knows the real figures. So so well, but a, certainly they're not re- releasing them. If this we had, you know, 100 here and 10,000 there uh, today. Mm-hmm. Oh, I think it's uh, well. I mean, the the you know the ten here, the potty one count. here. Some people, uh, uh, some organizations do make projections. So you have to go digging for it because NPR mm-hmm. is not going to tell you. NPR yeah. is going to tell you about a puppy that wrote a new book. Um, and uh, Lockheed Martin. <laughs> that, oh, that's. Yeah. Do they underwrite NPR? I think they do, don't they? They do. Yeah. Well, certainly um, the afternoon news. Hour? news yeah, yeah, news. Hour. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. Way yeah, to go. Yeah, but why NPR. do you Classic. keep wanting to pick on your own? It's like <laughs> NPR. <laughs> well, They're not my own. I'm just saying. I'm just saying there are probably a cleaner source of. Uh, of puppy related news, yes. Um, yeah. There you go again. Yeah, that's that's right. And our next <laughs> guest is Baxter. Meow 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 meow. Yeah, no, they're idiots. Um, uh, the uh, do we have any uh, sources of news from your point of view that we can trust? Well, there? I think the thing is how you listen to the news, and you listen to it with a you could say with a sort of jaundice kind of you know you yeah. you have to read it with some awareness about the agenda of the uh, underwriters of a particular news show. So PBS does things like they ran a uh, I've made a whole documentary about the Deepwater Horizon disaster in the Gulf of Mexico and how poor uh, the safety standards at BP are. At the end of the documentary, 
uh, Chevron comes up because Chevron has given the money to PBS to make this uh, 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 documentary about how its competitor stinks. So <laughs> is it true that BP did all of those terrible things? Yes, it's true. Now, and whose interest is that particular story being told? And so it's not that I don't listen to NPR. I do listen to NPR. It's not that I don't look at the New York Times occasionally. Uh, I do look at it. But I, you have to think about it, it, who, whose agenda is this serving? You know, if, if seven corporations own almost all the media outlets and then the supposedly public Public media outlets are, you know, whoever uh, uh, pays the piper calls the tune, I think, is, is mm. kind of how it works. And in the case of NPR's reporting, what they like to do is uh, tell a serious story. Often it can be about Iraq or Afghanistan. It can be about some, some bad news. Um, and they do, you know, do some serious reporting. And then they immediately come in with, uh, and now we have Billy Thompson on the phone from Tacoma, and his dog, uh, Spark, has written a novel. Uh, they, they immediately diffuse the, the sort of tension that's created by the bad news. All like, things considered. Yeah, that's by giving, why they call it that. And I love it. You know, the other day somebody said Errol Morris is going to be on the news hour, and he was. They had him on for three minutes. Mm. Uh, they, they talked about the Alabama football team for five minutes. Mm. Okay, so this is like AM yeah. sports radio read well, out by a Smith College graduate. But Michael I mean, Krasny's on for an hour. Yeah, he, he's... he's sure. Yeah. No, I, I'm, just, I'm just saying, you know, you, you have to have a, a sophisticated view. To, to what you're being told. And I think often people select a news source, and then it's, it's the voice of God. It is We're just, asking it is just, a lot from people. Once a year. That's right. Once a week, <laughs> yes. a, there is a news source right here. And, uh, and we also elicit uh, views and opinions and knowledge from our listeners, which is a wonderful thing to be able to do on this wonderful radio station, KWMR, <laughs> whose underwriters do not influence us in any way. Uh, that's a lovely <laughs> scarf you have there, Steve. Is that Susan Hayes? Um, no, it isn't. Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> um, well, someone, I'm going to sign off. Okay. Bye-bye. Uh, bye. Thank you. Thank you for okay. calling, Shelley. Thank you. Good luck with the potatoes. Yeah. Oh, Thank well. you. <laughs> Bye. Six six three eight four nine two. Call us and express your uh, thoughts and ideas about the future of warfare or the present of warfare. Here's uh, this is from December. Uh, after less than eight months of development, the algorithms algorithms are helping Intel analysts exploit drone video over the battlefield. So now uh, they're. They're analyzing what used to be done by human analysts, uh, drone footage, you know, camera footage, is now being analyzed by algorithms. And they're saying this will cause a change in mindset, that this type of AI will change the way an analyst or sensor operator does his or her job. And they say in a year or so, there probably won't be human analysts, you know. The AI will do it all. Uh, I, I, yeah, it's just really creepy. Again, if you don't have to see somebody, the, the limit to, to what you will do to them, you know, is, is sadly, uh, uh, whatever, removed. Um, if you don't if, – if you told me, Charles, you can have $100,000 right now if I press a button and somebody in Afghanistan disappears. Mm. Okay, this is the kind of choice that, that people are being presented with. But there's no materiality. There's no person or other right. to have empathy for. There's no suffering that you're encountered with. So people who have a, a strong conscience can – can can bridge that gap in their mind, but it isn't because they can actually touch and see and feel the the, the hideous suffering caused by you know right. killing do hundreds get, of thousands. Do of people I get two hundred thousand if I <laughs> kill the two hundred grand? What's your price? That's a new game here on KWMR. We will kill an Afghan family for you today. What's your price? Um, and uh, you know, so we were talking about uh, military training games. Here's. Uh, one of them is called Virtual Battle Space 2. That's being used. America's Army is an Xbox game that's being used by the U.S. military. Full Spectrum Warrior is another one. And uh, here's one that really sounds like a U.S. military one. Multi-purpose arcade combat simulator for a Super Nintendo platform. So, Did they, they make the game and then they sell it to kids? Is that the point here? No, they're oh. making. Well, they make. They're taking. Uh, they're taking platforms that were developed by Xbox and Nintendo and all these guys and and Silicon Valley boys, and then they the military buys the software basically and changes it to become a makes it an actual training game for for our new recruit, the millennial recruits, who are so used to uh, killing people on. On computer screen, four one five six six three eight four nine two. Give us a call, especially if you're involved in uh, in 
little bits and pieces that go into missiles because you know there's probably a few people who live out here who are in that business. There are a lot of former spooks, especially in Inverness. No surprise there. Uh, I'm surprised of like former CIA and intelligence people and military people that, really? that live over there. And uh, some of them fairly innocuous, talking about you, Wade Holland, uh, who worked at the Rand Corporation back in the 60s studying Soviet computer technology. Um, but Wade is very nice. Although I did uh, see a couple of typos in the light a couple of weeks ago, so get with it, Wade. Um, <laughs> the, uh, uh, <laughs> but, you know, I mean, the funny thing is just again to go Blame back the editors by the way but, well uh let's there they're our, our next underwriter um the uh, um but the 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 thing going back to that given thing and the fear that underlies this i think uh, you know when 9-11 happened uh a person in west marin one of our greats one of our prominent people who remain nameless um sent out an email to his great and good liberal groovy friends it includes you know lots of uh, people involved in politics and uh, business and the arts and all the rest of it. He's, he's a, w- a well-known guy. Um, and he said, well, didn't we expect this? And he said he was basically howled at, shouted down, how dare he say this? Uh, in what form was this? This is an email he sent. Oh, him. okay. And, and I heard, you know, people, I, 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 somebody I will name, Paul Fenn, was at a party in the Bay Area just a year after 9-11 or something like that, sim- making similar criticisms of the Bush administration or just American foreign policy. And didn't we expect this? And he, in some liberal Bay Area and groovy, said to him, well, you can't say that. You can't talk about it. And you think, like, wow, these people are so cowed. They're so silent. And, and you know, free speech is the reality in this country. We are the richest people on the planet, but people be afraid to have this conversation because it's seditious or something bad might happen to you. Or because it's, you know, again, if it's just the way the world is, if it's just the reality. Here we live in a place I don't see too many Native Americans walking around. Uh, this is no longer part of Mexico. I mean, in some sense, maybe there's just kind of this gestalt that, you know, that's how our civilization functions. We take things from other people. We kill other people. And, and we enjoy nice lives um, as a result of it. So why should we complain? Exactly. No complaints. It's just the way the world works. Yeah. Um, or yeah. it's just no, a or, little too bothersome to get involved. Well, it's, well, when there's cheese it's also, out there. it's like everything else on a national scale, it's on tough. a global scale. No. It's too big. It takes time, it's too. The, it, the majority of our budget goes to military spending now. I mean, it's... Hundreds of billions thing? of dollars. Hundreds yeah. of billions of dollars. And it becomes dollars. obsolete in... Uh, yeah. Well, uh, obsolete. I mean, what do you mean by obsolete? The, the bombs we made in the 1940s, it's still... <laughs> Put a dent in, you know, whatever. Yeah. Uh, the bunker buster from uh, 30 years ago is still there. Um, revolutionary scramjet technology reached to for this missile to reach its hypersonic speeds. Uh, so it doesn't carry... So, yeah, it's interesting. It's all new technology, although it isn't that new. It's just that they've figured out ways of getting missiles to fly six times faster than the speed of sound. They don't leave the atmosphere. That's one of the they don't leave the atmosphere. Yeah. And they have two different kinds. One is a kind of a gliding design, so it doesn't even have an engine. It, it reaches its speed and then it's released, and then it can be guided by drones I think above that's it. really cool. And the other <laughs> one is, uh, the other one does have a big rocket in the back, but... Uh, well, you have a neighbor making gliders, Mr. Hurwitz. I do? Who's that? Oh, uh, well, that would be telling. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, yeah. It's, I mean, not, it's not Richard Raspini, is it? It is Richard Raspini, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> he, you've found me out. Um, the <laughs> That's true. We do, have, uh, we do have a neighbor who uh, makes parts for that are being used by the military. Ah, yeah. So I, you know, I, I just, you know, I think these, yeah, these weapons are terrifying. It's, it's, and it's awful. But six six three eight four nine two. Please call us and tell us what you. You know, Al Al Clark designed the uh, handle. Yeah, yeah, for uh, NASA. That's what. Let's Hmm. get him. Um, and uh, well, no, he's dead. Yeah. The uh, too late. Uh, martini time. Oh, yes. we could we could celebrate him. That's yeah. a good idea. Sure, have a martini time. Uh, that's right. Have a Manhattan. Your stomach will flatten. The booze diet up at twelve o'clock <laughs> here on KWMR. <laughs> um, and but call us six six three eight four nine two eight four nine two or eight three one seven, and uh, give us your opinions or some knowledge. I mean, here we are, sort of scrambling around with all our uh, with all our opinions about all this and it's feeling. Tough, helpless. You know, we're presenting one uh, side of it, but it's pretty. It would be pretty tough for somebody to get on the phone today and uh, 
give us a uh, alternative point of view. Oh, just saying, I like these bombs? Well, well no. It, yeah, what is the alternative? This is the question. What's the alternative well, it, to there must be one. My God, we put, a, we put billions around be, behind it. There's got to be some strong alternatives. Well, the argument to war? Well, the argument <laughs> no, goes like this. No, the, the alternative to war, the idea is that it's necessary. It's something that we can't do without. Hmm. Uh, the next guy, if he gets uh, 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 ahead of us, then we're going to be uh, uh, – we're – we our our ability to, to um, project American power uh, mm-hmm. in the world will be hampered. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now, we have eleven uh, nuclear uh, eleven uh, carrier groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, there, we want to be able to project that power. If we don't do it, the Russians will, or the Chinese will, and that's yet, always the argument. And they're yeah. not as good as we are. They're not democratic nations, and we are. So that's the. I mean, those are the about, rationale. What about if uh, America gets great again, and we don't have to rely? Uh, we don't have to project. What if we? What if it were America first, and we're not going to get involved? They, most politicians that get in or most presidents that get in say we're not going to be the world's policemen anymore and we always are. Well, so how about if we don't get involved overseas, we withdraw the military from overseas, we develop uh, we drill our own oil and s- as, we're, uh, as we're transitioning to uh, solar and wind and other power sources uh, we become energy self-sufficient so we don't have to be fighting in the oil fields of the Middle East. Grow would our own th- would food. That be, would that be a a popular, I think actually, be, would that be a popular platform? I'm not well, sure. I think it would be I, wildly popular. I think, uh, really? Uh, I think, oh, yeah, sure. I think the president, is, this nationalistic uh, point of view, I think that it's contradictory. They're giving all this money to uh, the Pentagon. On the other side, he's saying, hey, we don't want to protect NATO anymore. Right. Uh, cough up your own money for this stuff. So, right. you know, in some sense, uh, we're hearing that. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and I don't think that the arguments uh, against war, um, I think that it has to be a question of um, changing our relationship to the things that we need to survive. But I think people would be very, very much in support of it because unlike us, the vast majority of the country does not benefit from global trade. It's harmed by global trade, does not benefit by global from global empire, although it uh, often has to be the foot soldiers of those uh, uh, particular uh, adventures. Um, and I think it would be a very, very popular position to have hmm. an anti-war position in the United States. States. Well, if we don't, and why uh, is Ron, Ron Paul, some goofball doctor from Texas, Congressman? He had uh, a huge uh, sort of following, raised lots of money at this grassroots campaign, just on the basis of saying we're going to close all those foreign military bases and bring our army back home. Mm. Uh, you know, Ron Paul, I think, is a, a goof noodle. Um, he should be moved to West Marin. He'd fit right in. Um, except, you know, except for he's against war. I've uh, never heard goof noodle before. Is that your own? Uh, uh, you, yes, <laughs> I've, I've, but you know, but I mean, here was somebody saying, "No, let's stop these wars." And his son, to some extent, Rand Paul, great name there. Rand. Uh, yeah. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, it's, it similarly it stakes out this kind of anti, anti-war position, which is great. I would love it if uh, there was a left-wing candidate that would do the exact same thing. And like I say, Norman Solomon petitioned. I think they, you know, got the 25,000 signatures, blah, blah, blah. Petitioned Bernie. Uh, I was going to say, to, that's to, the first thing I thought about. Yeah, to, to uh, you know, really come out strongly uh, in opposition to American foreign policy and these foreign wars, and you know, and which are illegal, right? I mean, Obama was drone bombing like seven countries, Somalia. Mm-hmm. Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Iraq, you know, probably Syria as well. And there were like, there's like a list of, well, of course, what we did to Libya. Uh, Without cetera. congressional approval. No, Great no, no, no. I've all these guys sitting in a room deciding, watching a big screen uh, TV as as the it's it's televised for a small group. And there, I mean, I, we all saw that picture of Osama bin Laden. Uh, they're watching it and uh, yeah, in a room. Yeah, well, Yemen. Yeah. I forgot about Yemen. Hillary Obama Clinton was uh, was in there. Live feed. Well, Obama ordered the extra judicial execution of an American citizen in Yemen, another country I forgot about. The problem we have is is we're caught up in this pageant. We're caught up in this, this, this you know, ridiculous opera uh, of, uh, uh, you know, Republican bad, Democrat good. And so you say Obama's a war criminal. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I say, well, he should be held to account for doing those things. Everyone would just say, well, no, the real problem is Trump or the real problem is this. But you can't be president of the United States without uh, the ability to kill someone. I mean, well, who, that's who ever ran on, you know, the only person that really didn't do that is Carter. 
And uh, they, that's uh, not true. Carter was the one that funded the Mujahideen and, and, and funded the, oh, the, the people around bin Laden. In the semi- and Carter hugely expanded defense spending. Will you please would, stop correcting me? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, well, I mean, you know, but that's, again, that would be a myth. I mean, it, it, and it really, ultimately, the myth for people, the privileged uh, sort of liberals like us, is the myth of Kennedy. Kennedy mm. would have stopped the war in Vietnam. Kennedy would have d- to dismantled the CIA. Kennedy would have this. Mm. Kennedy would have that. But he died. And we have been, like, I think, intellectually uh, and politically in stasis for, like, 55 years now because of this myth that if only the Democrat could get in and only they could do what they really wanted to do, Mm -hmm. right, this myth of Kennedy, then we'd have peace on earth. So when Obama does all these horrible things, people say, well, the, the Congress wouldn't let him do otherwise. Or he couldn't do this and he couldn't do that. So he is the prince and he does want to do good. It's just he's not allowed to do good. And people live in this myth. I mean, to this day. You know, I used to think during the uh, Vietnam War, I said, well, just wait till our generation gets control. <laughs> and, well, I mean, it's going to be different. I can tell you, you can see how depressed boomers got because they had to go through eight years of Reagan and four years of Bush, and then they finally got a boomer president, and he turned out to be a nightmare. Mm. Uh, he, he was, he, you know, okay. and, and I think it, I think it severely depressed people who had hopes, you know, like like yours, that, hey, once we, we get in there, we're going to do something different. And Clinton didn't. And I think it really, de- really Really crushed a lot of hope. <laughs> you know? Well, that's a subject for another uh, talk show. The uh, the contradictions of Obama. Yeah, well, or, or not contradictions. Yeah. I mean, he, he didn't claim that he was going to do it. Well, in the campaign trail, he made some kind of sort of lefty claims, but mostly he did exactly what he said he was going to do. He so, just... for uh, information about all this, you you're subscribed to Stratfor, yes, which I, do. I can't afford, but and they won't let me. Seven dollars. I mean, what what is this? You you are defense news. You you keep up. No, with it's this? a it's a uh, strategic it's a, foreign policy on it's a, not just yes, military. It's exactly it's international. It's a forecast of what the world's supposed to look like. Uh, They take up a lot of point of view. And I mean, from my point of view, uh, it seems more balanced than the uh, than the uh, public media uh, in the analysis. It's the only place you'll actually well, one of the few places you'll find actual news about this kind of stuff and and about uh, uh, diplomacy and all that. But uh, they only let you see two well, I send you. Two articles. Uh, I know that was it, the, the two you it, sent. I can't see any more because well, I have to subscribe now. So if you want to pay my subscription, now, oh, right. Stephen, are you going to be paying subscriptions? I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll send you my uh, my password. Oh, yeah. how's that? Don't let Stratfor know. And oh. the other one is military dot com. Which military dot uh, com? That yeah. exists. Yeah. Is that, is that the United States military? Is that just? Uh, I think it's uh, certainly people involved with the military. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. Thanks to our callers for calling in. Um, we have. I have this uh, weather announcement. Uh, if you go to the beach today, please don't turn your back on the beach because there will be northwest swells, 8 to 10 feet coming in, big waves coming in. West and northwest facing beaches will be particularly affected. Never turn your back to the sea. Fishermen should avoid fishing from rocks and jetties. And KWMR does not take a stand on any of the issues discussed on Let's Talk. Opinions expressed on this program are those of the hosts and callers and don't necessarily reflect the views of KWMR, its board of directors, underwriters, or members. We'll be back next Thursday at 11. Meanwhile, here is a little song from, I don't know, 30-odd years ago when... Uh, detection of missiles gave us four minutes to decide if we were going to launch a, a strike the against them. And uh, that is not the way it will be anymore. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you.